What's up guys, I'm Philip from Babs Honda Repair and today we have a 2003 Honda Civic in here and we've got to do a transmission replacement. If you know anything about the old 1 to 05 Civics, you know they are prone to two failures, head gaskets and transmissions, at least for the automatics. Alright, so actually I just put a transmission in this one, but the transmission that the customer bought from the junkyard is also defective. So got to pull it out and get her warrantied out. So I just figured I'd drop a little video to show you guys who may be wanting to do uh, a transmission swap yourself. You can do this absolutely in your driveway by yourself. Uh, it helps if you have a friend, but I don't have people here to help me. But I also have a lift. So you can do this on the ground. I've done countless transmission swaps directly on the ground. So hopefully can uh, guide you through this. All right, guys. So this is the most of the tools that I'm going to be using to pull this transmission out. I've just got my half inch impact I've got a quarter inch drive ratchet and then I've got a 3 8 stubby impact you can do this without the, the electric tools it just makes the job easier and then for my 3 8 drive I have a 14 12 10 and for my half inch drive I have a 14 17 and 19 and I've got these like universal wobbler sockets I got a 10 12 14 17 I've got a half inch extension half inch breaker bar and this one just has a little ratchet and attachment um, makes it a little easier and I just got a pair of right angle needle nose pliers to get the transmission lines off so that's kind of what I'm starting with and now we're gonna get to it so this unit has aftermarket wheels which don't use a standard 19 millimeter nut so we have a key And we can remove the wheel. Do that for both sides. There's a couple tools I forgot to mention before it is going to be a 32 millimeter socket and a pry bar to get the axles out. So we'll use a 32 millimeter socket here on the axle nut, and then once we get to it, we'll use the, the breaker bar to pop the axle out of the transmission. All right, guys. So using our 32 millimeter socket, pop these axle nuts off. Do that for both sides. We want to disconnect the calipers as well as the ABS sensor. So we got to disconnect the brake lines here. It's a 12. There's a 10 here. And there's a 10 right here on the ABS sensor. And then the ABS sensor is out of the way. And then we got our two 12s that hold on the brake caliper. So we have one here and one right down here. And then we could take this caliper and lay it up out of the way. ABS sensor and our brake caliper. I just like to lay it up here, about like that. You can see I just laid it up here so it's not hanging on the hose. And then our ABS sensor and just leave it hanging. That's all we got to do. And then we'll use a 19 here and a 19 here and remove both of these. Right, if you want to hold the nut on the back side, it's a 22. So we'll just use our impact. So we got the axle loose. You can see we got the axle out of the hub. So we're gonna do the same process for the other side and get them both loose and then we'll pop them out of the transmission. Guys, now before popping the axles out of the transmission, I would recommend that you drain the transmission fluid and you can do that right here and it uses a 3 8 ratchet. So you just put your little ratchet in there and you just turn it right out. And it's just a 3 8 ratchet. Alright, you just put it on right there. That's all you gotta do. Now I would advise having a drain pan handy, because whenever you take this out, it's gonna make a mess. Before we pop the axles out, I wanna remove this exhaust. So this is an EX model, so it has the uh, actual downpipe. If you had a LX or DX, it's gonna have the catalytic converter on the manifold. But this one doesn't, this one has a cut back here. And so if you had the LX or DX, both of your O2 sensors are going to be up top. But since it's the EX, it has one back here, and it's just a, 
a quick connector here and then it'll come off. All right, so we got that one off and the other one's up here. All right, so we got both the other two sensors disconnected. Now we need a 12 to get the two spring bolts out and then a 14 from the Kelly converter. So I got my 12 here and we're gonna take these bolts out right here. So when I say spring bolts, it has a spring on there. It just keeps tension on it, even when it's tight, or lets it flex some. So we got those out. Now we need our 14 for the back. So we just got my 3 8 I guess another thing I forgot to mention was a flathead screwdriver. That's my hammer. I'm going to take this shifter cable off. This is an EX model, so it has the aluminum oil pan. And the LX and DX have a steel oil pan, so it may be a little different down here for you. But so what we just removed was this little bracket that goes here. All right, it's two tens on that. And then we'll remove this bracket, it's two tins. Right, and then we're gonna remove this bracket and this bracket. So we've got a 14 on the bottom and two 12s on each one. There's little keepers on this that holds a bolt for the shifter cable. It's got two little tabs on there. Bend those tabs back, and then that's a pin. So we can see here, see the little tabs? This little tab here, and this little tab here. They just bend them back flat. So then, there's two tins right here. We have to remove those. Hold the shifter cable bracket on. All right, and then the shifter cable just comes off like so. Then we need to remove this dust cover. The tin will be on the back. All right, I guess we can go ahead and pop the axles out. So I just take the pry bar, put it right in there, and just pop, and it's out. Now, if you don't use your pry bar, or if you don't drain the transmission, it's likely to make a mess, because it will put fluid on the ground. Do the same thing on this side. So I put my 19 millimeter up here with my breaker bar and ratchet. I mean, you could use a regular half inch ratchet, but this is where this comes in handy, having it. This ratchet adapter. All right, so what we gotta do now, you gotta remove these flex plate bolts and that's where I use my quarter inch drive ratchet so there's eight bolts in here holds the torque converter onto this flex plate and so on this you make sure you turn counterclockwise on your crankshaft with your your breaker bar So once you get all of the eight removed, you see I can spin the torque converter by hand. All right, so now what we gotta do is we're gonna remove these bolts here. One, two, three, four, all right? And they're all 17 millimeter head. All right, and then we're also gonna remove the one that's right here, and that's also a 17 millimeter head. Okay. 
All right, we're gonna tighten those a little more. And then we we'll use our breaker board. <clears throat> Break them loose. And then we'll use our power tool. So we got all four of those out. Now we're almost ready to drop our subframe. So what we want to do is remove this 14 millimeter bolt on both sides. This uh, holds the subframe up to the body. Don't have to worry about it, front, it falling because we haven't removed the four main bolts, one on each corner of the subframe. So go ahead and remove these 14 millimeter bolts on both sides. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to lower down the car and then it has a 17 millimeter bolt on each corner of the subframe. See, so there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then once we let those bolts out, the subframe is going to come down. But I'm going to let the car all the way down and then uh, remove those four bolts and just set the subframe the rest of the way down on the ground. This is where having a friend would be helpful. You can see I got the car back down to the ground level. And then I'm just going to use my impact in the 17 millimeter to remove, remove these bolts. And just a little tip here, if you don't want it to just fall on the ground, you can take this, slide it back up to here, and just put the bolt through it. And that's going to keep it from falling all the way on the ground. So our 17 millimeter bolts look like this. They got a pretty long thread patch on them. That's what they look like. So once that subframe started dropping down, you could see how the top bolt kept it from just dropping down. So once I take that bolt out the top, It goes down, right? So now I just pick the lift up. But you could theoretically drag it out from right here. I'm just gonna lift it up for simplicity. So now we're just gonna lift it up just a tad, just to help clear that rear T bracket, and then drag it out. All right, so now that the, the subframe is out of the way, we're gonna open the hood and start taking apart everything under the hood apart that we gotta take off. Everything on the bottom that we need to take off is already off. So if you're this far, you're doing great. All right, stick her back in the service mode. Now we're gonna take out our battery and take off this air box. So for that, we'll just need a 10 millimeter battery. So we have the bolt here, a bolt here, a bolt right down there, and then there's this bolt right here. That's the four bolts that holds four bolts that holds on this outer air box. Here. Here's that. And that. Alright, so whatever they've got stuck on here, this is not factory. 
so I can't take the air box all the way out, so I'm just going to lay it over here on top of the motor. But that's not a factory piece, so if it had a factory piece, you could just take the whole air box out. So, now what we're going to do is start disconnecting all the wiring. So, I've got a ground strap here, it's 10 mil. Uh, I usually take, go ahead and take these bolts off too, like the ground off the engine, just this uh, bracket that holds the harness on. And then we got to take our hoses off. I recommend putting a drain pin under that because it's going to have some fluid come out. And then we have to take off all our connectors off the solenoids and stuff down here. And then the 10 mil right here we take out. And then it connects to this connector here that goes right back here. And then we disconnect our range selector switch and our speed sensor. And there's a torque converter switch. It's about right there. You can kind of see where my finger's moving. All right, and then we'll have to remove the starter wiring. That's a 12 under here. And then this one just pulls off. So you can see our 12 right there and just disconnect that. And then it'll be about ready to come out. This is the best thing of God for just doing what I can do. I don't recommend taking a start off until the motors or the transmission's already out. You can do it. It's two 14s, one on top, one on the bottom. It'll come right out. I just disconnect the wires off of it and call it good. Get our pliers. Take off these wiring connectors. Disconnected there, and then we got our one counter shaft speed sensor, our range selector, our actual speed sensor. Some other wires off of the little brackets. Alright, now all I've got left to disconnect wiring wise is the torque converter switch. It's kind of tricky to get to. Alright, so we got all the wires off the transmission now. We can just kind of leave them up here just where they don't get smashed. I'm going to get our transmission lines off, and like I said, get a drain pan drain pan under there just catching fluid that may fall just don't want to make a mess Camera. All right, so I just tuck those hoses up in the radiator fan, keeps them out of the way. And so now, what I'm going to do is get a jack stand and put it up under the motor, and set the car down a little bit to where it's the jack stands or the jack stand is supporting the engine. And then we'll use the floor jack and put it up under the transmission. And disconnect all the bolts for the transmission and, and then set it down. Okay, so we can see I got the floor jack set up here and it's just barely touching the oil pan to support it, all right? You could put a block of wood under if you feel like that's gonna make it better, but I don't ever use it like that and I've never had any issues. Just don't put a lot of pressure on the jack stand. Just the way the engine's not gonna crack the oil pan. So as you can see, I got the floor jack under the transmission and that's gonna support it so whenever I disconnect, my mount, which is right here, well, if I can find it, there we go, it's got our two 17 millimeter bolts, 
So once we disconnect this, that jack's gonna support the transmission and keep it from falling. And now that we've got all that set up, we're gonna remove our bell housing bolts. So there's one down here, and there's one right over there. So two on the front side, two on the top, and we've already removed the one from the back. So we're good on that front. So two, four bolts here, and the two bolts that holds the mount. All right, so we've got all four of those bolts out. Now we just got our two nuts that holds on the mount. Pop that out real quick. Alright, so now that we've got all those out, the transmission's ready to slit from the engine. And so we can just use a, a flathead or a pry bar to kind of put in this gap here to uh, separate it. If your flex plate is stuck to the torque converter, you may have to use something like a flathead or something to pry the torque converter off. But now she's ready to come out. Here we'll be able to see when it, when it drops out. Uh, like I said, I use my pry bar to separate it. And your jack stand is going to support the engine to keep from coming down too far. So it looks like we got it all disconnected. Now just lift the car back up a little bit to clear the transmission. Let the car back down onto the jack stand just so it doesn't put as much stress on our engine mount. And so as you can see the transmission is out. The engine is still kind of downhill a little bit. I just got it, like I said, it's just enough to keep some of the stress off the engine mount so we don't rip the mount. But yeah. So now, time for a transmission replacement. To put it back in, just kind of do the opposite. If you've got broke sensors on your new transmission, make sure to swap all of your sensors and whatnot. As you can see, this is the transmission that I just took out of the other day. And I actually swapped that one into this car. But the transmission was also bad. Gotta love some shady junkyards. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. If I was able to help you today, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, a like. Make sure to give me a subscribe. And throw me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Babs Honda Repair. Peace. Peace.